Hey friends, welcome back. Today I'm here with Nick Kutsas over in Sydney, Australia. I am so excited about this interview. This is really one to watch all the way to the end because he has an amazing story. He's had unfortunately incredible health challenges going back many years, had you know a ton of different diagnoses de dealing with chronic fatigue, severe chronic pain, you know, cognitive symptoms, all of that stuff. And for a long time, it was looking like he wasn't going to find his answers, but he eventually did find what he needed to get his health back. And he is doing amazing now, you know, exercising, got that cognitive clarity back and just doing incredible. And he articulates the recovery process better than just about anyone that I know. So I'm really excited, Nick, to have you here today. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. Now I'm nervous because you've talked me up. <laughs> 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 no pressure, but be amazing. <laughs> Go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. No, thanks for having me. And thank you for you for doing your channel. And you were part of my healing journey as well. You know, I saw, I call it Frankensteining, picking bits and pieces off everyone and putting it all together. So thank you. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely my honor and my, my pleasure to do this. So yeah, let's dive right in. Tell us a bit about your health journey. Yeah, sure. So normally when you see these recovery interviews, it feels like a, a hostage situation <laughs> at the start where people are like, you know, it gets really dark and depressing. <laughs> yeah. So look, if you want to know, I've had every symptom under the sun, you know, you might be watching this and saying, oh, no, but I'm different. You know, Nick hasn't had that. The only thing I wouldn't have had that you haven't had is if you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so then, <laughs> and I've had everything, unfortunately, like you said, you know, all the pain, chronic fatigues, fibromyalgias, vomiting. Anyway, let's not go into that. We're going to have a great chat today about what works, what I discovered <laughs> doesn't work, um, what I believe was wrong with me, actually, the proper diagnosis and um. Lucky there's no smell of vision because I stink over here. I got my running shirt on. <laughs> now I run. I run like I couldn't walk at times. I couldn't sit. I had crippling pain. I wish I could float. Now I run every morning and life is fantastic. That yeah. is absolutely amazing. And these issues went on for you for years. This was not a short-term thing. No, right back to childhood. So my pain started in childhood, like young back pain and migraines and sleep disturbances and then sort of every few years or decades I'd pick up new things and then there'd be times in your life where I call it the chronic stage where you really can't even function in society you know you can't work and all that sort of stuff so yeah so it's been a, a very very long journey and the hardest part is not really knowing what's wrong with you because you know you you go to your doctor and your GP and they say you've got this so because you've got this, go and do that. Not having that clarity and losing hope. And that's what happens. And that's why I've chosen to do these stories because, look, I didn't want to, <laughs> be honest, be on YouTube and podcast. <laughs> it's the last thing I wanted to do. But there was times when I was losing hope. So if my message helps someone who's right now, like crying themselves to sleep because of the pain, you know, this is why I'm doing this. It's all that message of hope. Like, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. Like, I don't understand all this scientific and doctor stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but if I can do it, then you can do it too. Like, if I can recover, I know others can too. That's my message. I really appreciate it. And I totally get it. I didn't want to do this either. I was terrified to start this channel. And when my videos would go up, I probably should admit this, but I would have to take sleeping pills the night before because I was just <laughs> terrified. Like, I was... Yeah. I honestly, I hated it for the first few months because it was so scary. Just, I just, I, yeah. but I just, I knew this was so important and it was really important to me. So I was so grateful to you and all the other people that come mm -hmm. on. And at the start of every interview for the people watching, if you think this is easy, I think almost every person I've talked to starts off with, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's okay. It's normal. You got this. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's, it's so important that we get these stories out there. So why don't we start with what didn't work? Can you share a bit of that? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So I did all the conventional stuff. So I went to the doctors, they gave me all the different pills and that stuff didn't work. And then with all the um, back pain and all of that sort of stuff, cryo, physio, massage, all of that stuff. So none of that worked. Um, chronic fatigue, I was seeing a naturopath. It sort of helped 
get my energy back, but it didn't fix the underlying problem. And I was spending a fortune with this, you know, with this naturopath. And I, I laugh about it now. I had like the most expensive pee in the world. Like <laughs> <laughs> when you pee, it was like weird colors. I'm like, I don't know if that's normal. That's like, that's a lot of money coming out there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, I tried all, all of that and it, it didn't work and then I tried some you know weird stuff I call it like a Mr Miyagi in Sydney in the city you know it was a two-hour trip because I was living two hours away back then up the coast and he was like a full ninja like Miyagi <laughs> coming in and there was like statues and icons and smoke and people around basically wearing barely nothing and chanting and it was just mad and he just do mad stuff on you and because you're just so desperate to heal you know what I mean you just want to heal so you you know because I've got the MRI still like you know I've got bulging disc and all of this stuff I'm like mate I'm just coming to you because I've got a physical problem why are you doing all this I don't like all this new age spiritual crap like just not into that at all you know so then you'd be told oh there's this really good massage lady going to here and it's like you you know seen a witch you know you go in there and she's <laughs> Chanting and lighting candles and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, so I've tr I, tr I tried everything, absolutely everything. And we've no, nothing, nothing worked. Like I said, the only thing that sort of helped was the naturopath, but that was just because I was taking so many vitamins. No wonder my energy was being pumped up, you know, because it's making you like hypo, really. Yeah, I think that's such a good example of how desperation blows your mind wide open. You just become very open-minded because you're like, I I'm desperate. I Sure. I will try it. If it helps one person, I yeah. will do it. And I know you and I talked about this before, but all the crazy things that we've done and we can laugh about it now, which is nice, you know, but I remember sitting in some woman's living room while she consulted all my dead relatives. And cause that was what was necessary for me to heal. And it cost me $200 to have this conversation. <laughs> and they had apparently committed all these crimes that I knew nothing about. And I watched her work it all out with them as um, they resolved it. And then they all got together and gave me permission to heal. And it's, you know, it's like, sure. Yes. I'll, I'll try it. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, so how did you start to find some answers finally? Yeah, so it was the beautiful Dr. John Sano. So I'm one of those guys who was in a very bad way. Um, it was around about 2013 I discovered Sano. Because you remember my healing journey was pre-internet. So when I first got sick, there's no Dr. Google back then, you know, in the 90s. And if there is internet, it was dial up and it was, you know, so slow. So, um, yeah, it was 2013. Um, I saw it online and I went, wow, wow. Like, what, what's this? And then I ordered the book, one of his books, Healing um, Back Pain. Because at that time I was being driven around. Like, I couldn't really sit, couldn't really lie down. I was in a really bad way. So I literally read the book, filled me with confidence. I picked up an axe and went outside and cut down a tree just like that, like it just completely changed me. Reading the book, you know, telling me that I'm not broken, that these bulging discs and all these problems they're telling me aren't the cause of my pain. And just having that confidence and that insurance, I just went out and literally people were screaming at me like, what are you doing, brother? Like you're normally like screaming on the ground in pain with heat packs and ice packs. So just that knowledge therapy that I'm safe, I'm not broken. You know, there's nothing structurally wrong with me. These are these bulging discs and that are just normal parts of, of, um, of your body. Sorry. So just having that confidence and having that proper diagnosis just flicked a switch. So I was able to really quickly, like really quickly get rid of my chronic physical pain. So I was able to come that really quickly, but it was just three things that were lagging, the burning, the insomnia and, and migraines that took me until now, you know, to get rid of. Okay. So I'm just trying to process this going from <laughs> not being able to sit, not being able to drive to chopping down a tree. Were you scared to do it? Or you had enough confidence after reading that book that you were structurally fine. And you're like, I'm just, I'm going to do this. Yeah. It gave me the confidence because I was taught for years, I was broken that these things in my body was what was causing the pain. And I was constantly told by doctors and physiotherapists, you know, you shouldn't bend over. 
you shouldn't do physical activity. You're just going to have this for life and just manage the best you can. Whereas when I read the book, no, these things aren't what's causing your pain. There is nothing wrong with you structurally, physically, go and re resume normal activity. So if it isn't, you know, bulging discs or structural problems that is causing the pain, because the pain was very real, what was causing that pain? Where was it coming from? Yeah, so that's what I learned. And it took me a while to sort of get my head around it. So the, the way I explain it, it, it's an emotional process causing a real physical thing in your body. So the pain is real. It is 100% real. I'm not saying it's all in your head and it's psychosomatic and all of that stuff. No, it's, it's a, your brain is perceiving danger and your brain is turning on the danger signal and it's sending a signal to your body, the pain, that there's something wrong and that you need to address it. So it's like your brain's confused because it's perceiving emotions as dangerous. So it's like I've got this one, you can't see it on the camera, I've got this massive scar here on my finger. So when I did that, um, I hurt myself really bad and had to get stitches and all of that stuff. The pain was really bad, right? Like here and blood coming out and all the rest of it. So I thought the pain was coming from here, but that's not actually what happens. Your brain is perceiving danger. So there's something wrong. I've cut myself and it sends pain signals to that spot for you to address it. So that's that's how actually pain works and, and the brain works. So the brain is perceiving the emotions as dangerous. So it flicks a switch and, and sends these pain signals. And apparently now they've proven this in the lab scientifically, because it was a theory from, from Sano. And, and I've seen it. I've seen the pain just disappear just like that by doing certain, you know, which we'll talk about later, certain things. So it's a it's a it's a danger signal being created in your brain to protect you because it's perceiving that there is danger. And that's it's literally that simple. That is fascinating. So yeah. that was a massive revelation. So that was a big game changer for you. But how did you start to turn around those other still very kind of significant symptoms that you were still experiencing? I initially tried daily. I would do education when I first started. So reading Sano's books, mm -hmm. um, learning about his theory of tension myositis syndrome or TMS. Um, and then I would do journaling, getting in touch with my emotions and I would do meditation, pretty much got rid of all of my symptoms apart from those last three. So those last three, I, I didn't really remove until I started working with a mind-body coach, October of last year. So that, what was that, 2021? And that was um, Rebecca Tolan from San Diego. So what we found was that there was three things missing I, I didn't know about and hadn't done. So it was somatic tracking, it was self-compassion and being present. They were the, the three things that completely shifted these, these last symptoms and brought me now to a, a life of full recovery. Yeah, Rebecca's incredible. And as you know, I've interviewed her on this channel and she has her own really remarkable story of you know, recovering from chronic illness. I'll link it here if anyone wants to check it out and learn more about what she does. Um, but can you walk us through briefly a bit of what those three different things mean? Yeah, definitely. So somatic tracking is a way to observe these sensations or these symptoms or these pains in your body from a place of safety. So it's like you're observing it, you're removing the fear, basically. So it's like you're teaching yourself on a conscious and subconscious level that these sensations aren't dangerous, they're painful, and they're real, and they hurt, and they can ruin your life, you know, if you allow it to. So by doing that, your brain then starts to get the message. So it's like your brain sending the signal of pain to say that there's something wrong, that you're broken. Um, Nick, you've got to fix this. Where, and then you're sending the message back. No, I'm not. There's nothing actually wrong here. There is no danger here. You, you can turn that signal off. And the brain gets the message. Sometimes it gets it quickly and it will just, I've seen symptoms just disappear like that. And then it will jump up to a different part of my body so that's when you know it's a brain thing. Okay, so I've got lower back pain right now. Okay, and then bang, I've just made it turn off. Oh, now it's gone to my, up to here. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I've done that in somatic tracking where it's just been pinging all around my body. And then what that does is that gives you confidence and insurance that you're on the, on the winning track. This is the biggest thing that got me. If I physically had a structural problem, the pain would not move around. If your leg's broke, it's broke. Yeah. 
<laughs> it doesn't move. Mm -hmm. So that's somatic tracking. And then the next one was self-compassion. So when I first heard about that, I'm like, what is this woman talking about? Self-compassion. I'm like, what is that? Because I'm a blokey bloke, right? I'm not a <laughs> well, You can see behind me, there's like arty videos. And, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what is this? But she was right. You know, I didn't realize how much pressure I put on myself, how mm. critical I was how brutal I was, you know, I was just such a bully to myself. So learning one about self-compassion and then being kind and loving to myself and catching myself, you know, I'd catch myself being so hard um, on myself and then just shifting from that to being kind and loving and accepting of myself. So that really helped. And then the third one was being present. I'd go for a drive to the shops and I didn't know how I got to the shops. That's an example of not being present. I'm just mm -hmm. so in my head, not in my surroundings, not in my body. So it's like she started bringing awareness to all these things. So then I'll go out through my day and start to realize it. And then I'll, I would shift. I'd use techniques like I really use the shower to bring myself back into the body. Like it was a way to train my brain. Like come in the shower now, like let's really focus on the water coming down on me. I'd use like slow walks going out into nature. So they they were the, the three big tools. The other things are, I think, called being indifferent. Once you learn that it's a, a, a pain danger signal, you become indifferent to the pain. When I say pain, that's referring to everything, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, whatever it is. So having that indifference, basically sends that message back to the brain that you are safe and that you're not broken and it literally turns it off still having self-compassion so i'll do that i'll put my hand on my heart a nice big deep breath you know breathing it out say i love you nick i know this sucks i know this hurts but it's okay okay there's nothing actually structurally wrong with you you're going to be okay so it's like shifting and that that's so powerful i I did that once when I was driving and the burning was off the charts, right? And I just did what I just sort of said when I was driving and the burning stopped just like that, just disappeared by showing love and kindness and indifference. This is incredible. And you know, it really explains why so many of us have been stuck. Like how many of us are going to our family doctor when we get this and are being told this kind of information? You know, this is not at all the path we're on where... Yeah, you know, I was taking two thousand dollars worth of supplements per month for almost two years, you know, like, <laughs> trying to fix myself. And, you know, this gets me thinking, and I wonder because something I've always been perplexed about my experience is that you know, once I when I was really sick in the first couple of years, I didn't drink at all. But once I was partially recovered and trying to function in the world, the way I could socialize and the way I could um, have energy was alcohol. Like. I lived in a perpetual state of survival mode. Like, how am I going to get through this meeting? How am I going to get through this trip to the grocery store? You know, when's my next nap? Like, I was just stressed all of the time. But as soon as I started drinking alcohol, I felt fine. And I think any of my friends from back then that see these videos, they think, you were sick. Like, you seemed fine. But it just shut off my NECFS, yeah. like, completely. Like, I was a regular functioning kind of drunk, but <laughs> like a <laughs> normal person. And it's probably... You know, when I think about it now, it's it's shutting down all that stress, that panic, that fight or flight, the the danger. Yeah. You, know, you just yeah. relax. I'm not advocating alcohol as a way <laughs> to feel better. That is not the message. Yeah. <laughs> it is poison. It has its own stuff. Yeah. But it's yeah. so many other people since I've started sharing that have told me they have they felt the same thing, and it's you know it kind of helps one theory, I guess, for why that's been the case. Yeah, that's very interesting because it's like you removed the fear and attention and that's what I'm yeah. big on. If we go back to the principle that it's a danger signal, so you're now sending a message that you're safe, you're not focusing on it and it flicks the switch. The best way I understood this whole process is when you get embarrassed because sometimes I talk about it, people go, what do you mean it's a, a, it's a switch and a danger signal? How Are you saying it's all in my head? No, well, just think about when you get embarrassed. It's an emotional thing. And then you have a physical response, you know, you go purple in the face or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. I've done a lot of silly things in my life and, and I've hurt myself, right? A lot of times, um, you know, I've fallen through floors on building sites and <laughs> cut myself open and some really silly stuff. I grew up in takeaways, you know, put my hand in a deep fryer once I wasn't thinking and yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
I've had pain, this pain is off the charts compared to that pain. This brain process pain, nothing comes close. And I can handle a lot, like nothing comes close. And to me, I get it because it's you. You think you think there's something wrong and you're screaming at you, you know, and it's actually you screaming, I love you. I care about you. There's something wrong that, that you know, I'm trying to protect you. That's one thing I, I like to get out there because for years I thought I was at war with myself. You know, I'm fighting with myself. I just want to go to sleep. Let me go to sleep. You know, I just want to watch a movie without burning or back pain. You know what I mean? No, but it was trying, it loved me. I loved myself like it was trying to protect me. You know what I mean? So, and that was a whole different headspace to get to get around. That's an important point because I think many of us start to get frustrated with our bodies and feeling like we're broken and feeling like it's not on the same team as us. And, you know, why isn't it, why is it doing this to me? And um, yeah. which can get in the way, it just it further impacts all of those things that we're trying to get past when we're working on recovery adds to the stress as to the, you know, I'm sure that danger response. It sounds like this has changed you quite a bit, um, <laughs> self-professed blokey bloke. Do you feel... <laughs> like a different person as a result of having gone through all this? It definitely has. When I first started this journey, you know, I laugh at this. <laughs> I didn't even know what emotions were, <laughs> I didn't know what feelings were. I literally had to Google, give me a list of emotions and explain them. Like, <laughs> I was, <laughs> you know, I was a blokey bloke. You know, it's like, she'll be all right, mate. She'll be all right, fella. Shut up. <laughs> I've always been kind and generous and compassionate to others. So you know where it's really changed me? It's changed how I treat myself. I was brutal. I've got this task to do. Well, you're not going to the toilet. You're not eating. I don't care if you've got a headache. I don't care if you're vomiting. Toughen up, princess, and get it done. You know, that's me. That was my nature. So that's that whole self-compassion piece, which just changes you me and Rebecca used to talk about Nick would you treat a child like this you're being so brutal you know just imagine you're a child like you know just think about that so that's that's what's yeah definitely changed me and as a result the the symptoms you know just dissipate and and I feel lighter and I've got more energy like I've never felt this good that's like and I joke with Rebecca it's like a body double <laughs> <laughs> it's like Someone's replaced me with a new me, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Everything that you're saying is so relatable as you're speaking. I'm just, you know, nodding my head. And I imagine, you know, those of you watching far too many of us find it relatable. I spent my whole life beating myself up, being hard, driving myself harder, thinking that, you know, my value came from how productive I was, how skinny I was, how many achievements I had, and constantly comparing myself against everyone around me. And as social media and the internet became more prevalent, it just became a multiple times a day thing where you had so many reminders of how, you know, you, your perception of yourself anyways is that you're not adding up. So I think that's such an important message about that compassion and just to really look at how you're treating yourself. And you know, this life is meant to be lived and enjoyed. And how much of our life do we want to go through being that asshole to ourselves? You know, is that the life that we want? And I think we think it's temporary. And once I get this, or once I get that, then I can ease up, but it's a forever moving target. You know, we can always add one. It's never enough. Once we get there, maybe you're happy for five minutes, be like, oh, but now I need that. Or, you know, now I could do twice as much. So I think that's yeah, such a valuable message. Most of the people watching these videos are still probably very much living this. And you and I both know what that feels like when you've tried a zillion things and it just, it feels like you might just never get out of it. And you're just stuck in this loop, this groundhog day of suffering where every day feels like a struggle and it can be easy to start to, you know, lose hope. So what would you say to those people right now that are in this and still trying to find their path? Yeah, my message is never give up because I could have easily gave up. I, I could have, because I, I did, I did get to a point where, like I said, I got rid of most of my problems, but I still had those three things. Yeah, the burning, the insomnia and the migraines. And I got to a point where, you know what? Well, I'm a lot better than what I was. So this is good enough. Yeah. Time to time, I'm going to throw up and have a migraine and not sleep. But I went, no, I, you know, no. So um, it's just 
not giving up and that there is hope. And they, I don't know, in just the last year or so, there's just been an explosion of this TMS mind body work. There is, yeah. I found Rebecca, I'm trying not to cry now. I still get emotional about it, you know, because my life is so different now. And it just clicked. It just clicked. And it just, she just, yeah, it just all happened for me like that, you know. And I believe that will happen for you for who's listening, you know, because like I said, you you will find it. And then once you do find it, you you do have to work at it. You may have heard my story of running. I, you know, I said to Rebecca, I want to run again. And I understood the whole process. And but I'll try and run and I'd have crippling pain, you know what I mean? And and it took nine days of me running with crippling pain for my brain to get the message and then turned off the pain. Once you find what works for you, just stick at it and your brain will get the message in time. That's amazing. And I remember you and I talked about this before and I, cause I also wanted to run again and it was a big dream, but it took me a long time. My process, I don't know, a good couple of months, two, three months to be able to properly run again. <laughs> like I did a video on that. Nobody watched that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nine days. That's pretty amazing. Well, yeah. and I know you have a website that you put up just to share your information and share your story. So, um, of course, that will be in the video description. I really encourage people watching just to uh, give it a click and check it out because, um, yeah, just some really great stuff there. Thank you so much, Nick, for your time today, for sharing your story. I think this is such powerful information that could potentially help a lot of people. And I'm just so grateful that you are out here um, telling your story and kind of paying it forward. No, thank you. It was really good. Yeah, And we'll have Rebecca's information linked in the video description as well yeah. if anyone's interested in learning more about the work that she does. And for those of you watching, if you have a story to tell or if you think you have information that would help people who are facing chronic health conditions like this, I would love to hear from you. There's a link in the video description. You can just expand it and you'll find it and reach out to me and let me know. And whatever you are facing, as Nick said, don't give up hope. Keep going. Keep at it. You have totally got this. You will get there. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it and I hope to see you in the next one.